at Barmara in South Australia's Riverland, pumpkin and watermelon grower Nathan Jericho is laying the foundation for his next crop. 13 years ago, Nathan, who farms with his brothers and parents, started using plastic mulch, and it's been a game changer. So you never used to grow using plastic. How much difference has this plastic made for you guys? It's made a huge impact on our pack out rates. Mm. Before using plastic and using overhead sprinklers, we were throwing out up to 80% of our product. Mm. Now using the drip and the plastic together, our pack out rates are up to 95%. And why is that? What does it actually do? Because it retains the moisture under the plastic. The product is grown on dry soil and so then we have less blemishes on our fruit. After initially laying it by hand, Nathan and his family have moved on to more efficient methods as they increased their use of plastic. But what has done wonders for crop production has left a waste problem they're not so happy with. You know, we run a really good operation, but the, the thing that yeah, maybe grates a little bit is, yeah, all this plastic that we're, I guess, putting into landfill, yeah, we use in excess of 100,000 metres in a season. And at the end of the season, we roll it up using a machine to make nice tight bundles. And then we take it to the dump. At Netley, on the outskirts of Adelaide, is someone who knows all about the pros and cons. Scott Morton has been in the plastics business for 20 years and used to produce conventional plastic agricultural film. But the director of Biobag World has switched to an alternative which breaks down in the soil to try and reduce the estimated 200,000 kilometres of plastic used on farms. At the moment in Australia, we use around 40,000 tonnes a year of single-use plastic that we really don't have an ability to recycle. Um, yeah, they're either burning it, they're burying it, or they're trying to the expensive cost of taking it to landfill. So he's now making agricultural film out of a resin, which contains plant starches and biodegradable polymers from both renewable and fossil raw materials. The resin, produced by an Italian company, is melted into a liquid, then pushed up through an extruder to create the bioplastic material, which is then flattened. One of the turnoffs for potential buyers is the cost. This product is two to three times more expensive than plastic mulch. Ideally, the government would incentivise. So at the moment, there's a lot of money feeding into plastics recycling. What we would like the government to do is incentivise people to avoid plastic in the first place. Even without the incentives, he says this still makes financial sense. Initially, our product is more expensive than plastic. However, the reality is, if you take into account disposal costs, and labour costs of having a product that you don't have to pick up, then the cost is actually neutral. Back in the Riverland, in the middle of a mass of sprawling mounds, is a man who reckons the cost pays off. Rick Spencer works at the Riverland Vine Improvement Centre, which supplies rootstocks and other vine material to growers across Australia. This whole block was a weed problem. Here, weeds are the number one enemy, which workers have traditionally pulled out by hand and tried to control with regular spraying. But he's increasingly turning to the bioplastic mulch Scott Morton's company makes, after trialling it two years ago. This is it, under here. Oh, OK. And that has an irrigation underneath it. And how long has that been down for? This has been down for about three months. So how much difference has this made? It's been 100% better. Really? Yep. It stopped all the weeds from coming up because we've got our dripper lines there and it's always wet. So it stopped all the weeds coming up here and we've only sprayed around here once besides that, with yeah. the herbicide. So how much has this cost to put this down as much as you've actually got out here? This cost us about $35,000 compared to one year we spent over $100,000 on labour and herbicides. Wow. The other major selling point for Rick is that this material completely breaks down so he doesn't have to retrieve it. How you on, mate? Hey, Scott Morton agrees this isn't a one-size-fits-all product. It needs to be custom-made 
to suit the type of soil it's being used on and the growing seasons for different crops. How's the variation? Oh, that's pretty good. And then they have to make sure what they produce is consistent. Unlike polyethylene, compostable materials have what we like to describe as a little bit more personality to them. So the variables in how we process that material can change on a daily basis, depending on air temperature, moisture content. So it's a constant job to maintain the quality. There are other companies producing biodegradable mulch films for agriculture, but this is the first product to become certified after passing a range of tests conducted by the Australasian Bioplastics Association. Those tests confirm the product completely breaks down into organic matter, carbon dioxide and water and is not toxic to the flora and fauna in the soil. Unlike some plastics, which are often labelled biodegradable, but do leave harmful residues in the soil. With the volume of plastics in the market at the moment and the greenwashing terms, it's important for us that we actually certify our product. It is a confusing space, which until now Nathan Jericho hasn't been convinced is worth switching conventional plastic for. My concern is that I don't want something breaking down and only half breaking down. Like, I want a complete job. And that's why I've maintained the use of the plastic we're using now, is that I know that I can take that plastic away 100% from our property. But picking all this up takes several weeks. So later this year, he's going to try the bio-agri-film, which, as long as it lasts the length of the growing season, could solve the waste problem that has been gnawing at him. I guess for straight away a cost saving, you know, that could be potentially a, a really good thing for us, obviously. Uh, but for the environment too, and for sustainability in moving forward, so that we can continue growing these crops um, well into the future.